Before we talk about the debt ceiling, it's important to realize the difference between the deficit, the deficit, and the debt. Because these words are thrown around, and it's clear that they're related, but sometimes people might confuse one for the other. The deficit is how much you overspend in a given year, while the debt is the total amount, the cumulative amount of debt you've, you've gotten over many, many years. So let's take a I guess a very simplified example. Let's say you have some type of a country, and that country spends, in a given year, that country spends $10. But it's only bringing in $6 in tax revenue. So it's bringing in in taxes, it's only bringing in $6. So this country, in this year, where it spends $10, even though it only has $6 to spend, it has a $4, it has a $4 deficit. Four dollar DEF is short for deficit, and well, let me just write it out. You might think it's defense or something. It has a four dollar deficit, and you might say, well, how does it how does it spend more money than it brings in? How can it how can it actually continue to spend this much? Where will it get the four dollars from? And the answer is, it will borrow that four dollars. Our little country will borrow it. And so the debt, maybe going into this year, the country already had some debt. Maybe it already had $100 of debt. And so in this situation, it would have to borrow another $4 of debt. And so exiting this year, it would have $104 of debt. It would have $104 of debt. If the country runs the same $4 deficit the year after this, then the debt will increase to $108. If it runs another $4 deficit, then the debt will increase to $112. Now that we have that out of the way, let's think about what the debt ceiling is. So you can imagine the United States actually does. It's continuing to run a deficit. It's continuing to spend more than it brings in. And actually, for the United States, these ratios are appropriate. The United, for every dollar that the United States spends right now, 40%, 40% is borrowed. Or another way to think about it, only it only has 60% of every dollar that it needs to spend right now. So it has to go out into the debt markets and borrow 40% to keep spending at its current rate. And so if it's continuing to borrow, you can imagine that the debt keeps on increasing. The debt keeps on increasing. So let me draw a little graph here. So that axis is time. This axis right over here is the total cumulative amount of debt that we have. We continue to have to borrow 40% of every dollar that we're spending, and so our debt is continuing to increase. So our debt is continuing to increase. And Congress has the power, or Congress has the authority, to essentially limit how much debt we have. So right now, we have a current debt limit of $14.3 trillion. So this is $14.3 trillion. And I, e even though Congress has this authority, the way that it's worked in the past is it's kind of just a rubber stamp. Congress has just always allowed the debt ceiling to go up and up and up to fund our borrowing costs. And if you think about it, that kind of makes sense, because right now, Congress is the one that decides how, where to spend the money. What are the obligations? And so the debt ceiling is like, OK, we've already agreed what you have to spend your money on. Congress has to determine, Congress is the one that figures out what we spend our money on and what our taxes are. And so they say, look, we've already determined how much you have to borrow. It would seem kind of ridiculous for us, after we've determined how much you borrow, to say that you cannot borrow it. You cannot, you cannot actually do what we've told you to do. And so historically, Congress has just kind of gone with the flow. They said, OK, yeah, we've told you you need to borrow more money to, to execute on you know it's the executive branch has to run the government for you to actually run the government based on the budget we told you so they just keep upping it and the last time the debt ceiling was raised was actually very recently february 12 2010 it was raised from 12.3 trillion it was raised from 12. Point actually 12.4 trillion to the 14.3 trillion. And this happens pretty regularly. It's happened 10 times since 2001, 74 times since 1962. So it's just a regular operating thing. And right now, we, the Obama administration says, look, we've actually come up against our debt ceiling. We want to raise it. And ideally, for the Obama administration, they want to raise it by about 2.4 trillion. So they want to raise it to 16.7 trillion, which will kind of put it off the table for a little bit, put it past the elections so that we don't have to debate this anymore. The Republicans, on the other side, want to essentially use this, and this is a little bit unusual, to use this as leverage to 
essentially reduce the deficit. And not only to reduce the deficit, but in, in particular to reduce the deficit through spending cuts. And so that's why it's become this big game of chicken and why we're going up against this limit. Now, one thing that, that you may or may not realize is that we act, we've actually already hit the debt limit, the current debt limit. And we hit that debt limit on May, May 16th, 2011. I'm making this video at the end of July in 2011. And the only reason why the country is continuing to operate, and the, the only reason why the country has continued or has been able to continue to pay interest on its obligations and pay, uh, issue social security checks and support Medicare and, and, and buy fuel for aircraft carriers and all the rest, is that Geithner, who's the Treasury Secretary, has been able to find cash in other places, cash normally set aside for employee pensions and all the rest, and has essentially done a little bit of uh, uh, bookkeeping, taking money from one place to, to feed another. But what he said, what he's publicly said, is that he'll be able, he won't be able to do that anymore as of August 8, August 2nd, 2011. So this right here is the date that everyone is paying attention to, August 2nd, 2011. According to Geithner, at that point, he won't be able to find random pockets of cash here and there and shuffle it around in you know, what he calls extraordinary measures. And at that point, the United States will not be able to fulfill all of its obligations. And so if you think about all of the obligations of the United States, and this is a huge oversimplification here. So this bar is, represents all of the obligations. Some of those obligations are things like, things like, well, it's interest on the debt that it already owes. It already owes a huge amount of debt, 14.3 trillion dollars. Things like Social Security, Medicare, Medicare, defense, defense, and then all of the other stuff that the company, that the, the country, that the country has to has to support all of their other obligations. So if as of August 2nd, 2011. We cannot issue any more debt, and Geithner can't doesn't have any extra cash laying around with these extraordinary measures. Then the the only option, if if those are the only options on the table, the only option is to somehow reduce some of these things by 40 percent, because 40 percent of of every dollar we used to spend on all of these obligations, 40% are borrowed. And so something over here is going to give. We're not going to fulfill our obligations to one or more of these things. All of these things that we are legally obligated to fulfill, that Congress has said, these are the things that the United States should be spending its money on. And so at that point, it is perceived that we would have to default. And a default actually would be on any of its obligations. But in particular, we could be, we, especially if we have to cut everything by 40%, and we don't want to see retirees you know, not be able to you know, get evicted from their houses or aircraft carriers not have fuel or whatever else, we might defer or have try to restructure or do something weird with our debt, in which case we would be defaulting. And I want to be clear, a default it's usually referred to not fully paying the interest on debt that you owe, but it would be a default would be any of its obligations. The United States has this triple A rating. If the United States says it's going to give you a Social Security check, you trust that. If the United States says that it's going to it's going to pay for that Medicare payment, you trust that. If it if it says it's going to give you an interest payment, you trust that. All of a sudden, if the United States does not fulfill any of those obligations, then all of the obligations become suspect. And the reason why this is a big deal is you can imagine if if you borrow money and you've always been good at 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 paying back that money, you're going to have you're going to pay lower interest than other people would have to pay. But all of a sudden, for whatever reason, one day you default, you either delay your payments or you say you don't have the cash to pay your payments. Then people's like, "Wow, you're a much riskier uh, a risk. You're a much riskier person to lend money to. So now I'm going to increase the interest rates on you." And so the perception is is if the United States were to default on its debt or any of its obligations. That interest rates, that interest rates would go up, and the reason why this would really kind of not be great is because it would make the debt and the deficit even worse. Then we would, then this chunk is going to have to grow. Our obligations are on on debt as as new debt gets issued. We're going to have to pay more and more interest, so it's going to just make matters worse. It's going to make the deficit worse. And on top of that, it's not just that the government's debt, the interest on the government's debt will go up, but gov but interest on all debt in the United States will probably go up because government debt is perceived to be the safest. It's the benchmark. A lot of other debt contracts are actually tied to government debt. So you'll have interest rates throughout the economy go up, which is exactly what you do not want to happen when you are either in a recession or when you are recovering from a recession.